is the Bible against the LGBT plus community and the same sex attracted people. And uh, this was our response. Uh, borrowing our reference from the scripture, from the book of the Leviticus 18 and verse 22, the Bible says uh, that God was against the sex, same sex gender, and uh, a continuation of the same uh, co continued in the book of uh, Romans 1 and verse 26, 27. Where God says that uh, out of these uh, sexual behaviors, the world went out of course, and uh, that's why we we find God coming to an extent in uh, Genesis 19, uh, bringing the floods to ensure that this behavior does not continue. Uh, secondly, uh, from uh, the introduction to Revelation, that is Genesis to the end, Leviticus, the kind of the model of marriage that has been encouraged is uh, of opposite sex. So there is no single instance that we have uh, in our forefathers in the New Testament having people be welcomed to have either incest, uh, same sex, so we agree that uh, the Bible has sincerely condemned the LGBT plus community and same sex attracted people. Thank you. Uh, okay, so that question so, so is the Bible against the LGBTQ community and same sex attracted people? If I asked you, is the Bible against lies? Lies. It's against lies. Yeah. Is the Bible against adulterers? It's against adulterers, but the adulterers are right. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a nice answer. All of us have seen the need to be reconciled to Christ. The Bible is against sin. Alright? Christ died for sinners. Oh, and all of us are sinners. Okay? So I think the first thing, even when you're responding to someone, if someone comes and tells you, oh, I'm a part of this community, and I don't understand why the Bible hates me. Yeah? The Bible doesn't hate you. It's just as simple as that. Because if the Bible hates you, it hates me also. It hates everyone. Which means God hates everyone, which is not true. Okay? So the simple answer is the Bible is against sin. And we know what sin is because it's God who defines it. So if God has said something is wrong, even if I believe it's right, it's still wrong, no matter how much I love it. So I'll start. See, it was a group now. We never get to God. See, for groups, I'm going to be. Okay, um, my group we discussed a lot. Uh, this was our question. And um, people got gay. Um, for us, we said no because, um, first of all, uh, a gay, a, a man who attracts to other men. So, this, uh, we said no because it is ungodly. So, uh, our God created man, uh, our God created male and female. In, Gen in Genesis, we see that. So, uh, and why he created male and female is to multiply the earth. So, he, yani, ha, 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 kutuomba, tukiu, uh, yani, we were not born uh, being gay. Okay? Uh, and we see in, uh, 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 the Bible tells us, do you, I think, do you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? Those things were there, but what God did, he, he, and he was to me any motto, see no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the thing that caused, uh, 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 
gazing or the root cause of gazing is those that we had the, uh, the uh, our doctor had to discuss here brokenness, advanced child experiences, uh, uh, and also how they are brought up. So our parents should uh, uh, look on that, should uh, look how they are bringing up their children and uh, also lack of lot of uh, lack of role models uh unapata hawa watu wenye wanakuwa hao hiyo gay hawa wana na role model and then absence of uh, god in our society so in our society we should uh, to to when hiyo like god in us bila tutafunza hao wenye wako broken uh ili wa change was praise or mambo na gay or was it in the way to be to you uh god, god gave us to choose good good or right no na tunajua yani god anatuanga yanga huwa anatuacha to choose good or right okay or wrong <laughs> yeah so uh ni wewe to choose ukichoose ukwe gay ukichoose ukwe lakini sio mi haja ya kukuwa yeye ama utingiza na LGBTQ because God created us uh, to male and female to multiply they are not to be gay you are not be uh, you are not born uh, to be a gay or utingiza na mambo ya LGBTQ and also uh, what I should uh, uh, tell the church and uh, also the society and our parents niti to uh, those who are uh, wame jingisha na hizo mambo na gazing or uh, LGBTQ wa what they like what they condemn they they should not be condemned or they should be embraced and let let educate educate them yeah to be a good uh, to be good people in our society and also in church thank you. I think it was me standing next to my mid and others. But um, so the question was, are people born gay? Yeah. So do we yes, no? No. Yeah. We are born sinners. That's what we are born. Yeah. We are born in a sinful nature. And so all of us, even if you are not struggling with homosexuality, if you're struggling with something. Okay? That doesn't mean you are born to be. If I struggle with telling lies, I wasn't born to be a liar. I wasn't born to be a thief. Okay? I might have a struggle, but that doesn't make that my identity. I wasn't born with this. But as I have to say, man, Kesho, I will just finish the talk. Now you go, I love you, see on the news. They've discovered there is that game to you, you to get in a time as well to get it. It's in their system. Yeah? So now so they can come to you and say, I was born this way. If they discover that tomorrow, right? Right? You see, then there's an answer. Right? So, if they discover that gene, does that change what the Bible says? If I was born to an alcoholic parent, that means it's likely that I have the gene to be an alcoholic. Does that mean that it's okay to be an alcoholic? It means that that's something that I might struggle with, but I need to put to death in the flesh, just like the scripture calls us to. So, so, I don't do that in my own strength. It's not that because I'm strong, I'm able to do it, but it's because of God's grace. Okay? Yes, but no one is born gay. They've tried to look, it's not there. Who is next? So, uh, one minute. Next. Good afternoon. We were given a question that looks like nine or six. And so as many people as we have in the group, so we have the opinions. And our question was love is love, true or false? Yes, I mean. So uh, we have we have uh, those that are of the school of thought that love is love. And some of the arguments we put forward that Love is, univers is universal and at a broader look on universally at a broader look of the need to treat one another with consideration. 
So if you look at it from that perspective, love is love. Uh, also the, I, the argument that uh, love is about wanting the best for the other without returns to what you give, love is love. And love is about our expression of what we feel. And as long as uh, our deeds uh, will be consistent with what we claim, then we will say love is love. Being a feeling of affection, it can be spread to anybody and so it becomes love is love. But on the other side of the coin, love is love is false because uh, in our expression of love, our expression of love needs to be contextualized and where it is being spread. For instance, this would be if I when it is about a romantic relationship, when it is a brotherly love, or when it is a feeling we just have about one another, about wanting the best for them. And looking at love from the perspective of God, it cannot be like that of man. And so we cannot just blanketly say that love is love. Uh, in a romantic relationship, you cannot say that you love the same sex and claim that it is still love. And so we cannot argue that love is love. That will, be, uh, that will not be true. Love cannot be love because of because uh, it is because of its vulner vulnerability to abuse. One can fake affection until what they get what they want, and then they leave. But at the time when we closed, we ask ourselves, uh, how would Jesus? do if he was in any of the first situations where we were and we claim that we are expressing love. We did not give an answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> so we will also be killed. What would Jesus do if he was in any of our diverse situations to express love? And then he would define what love is. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, you're telling me your answer is how to drink? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the response to the question. Okay. When well, Jesus already told us what love is, he did not. He is one who first got to this room greater love than this and has to lay down his life for his friend. But also they are told the exact definition of what love is. So if someone tells you love is love, the first thing you should ask is, what is love? What is love? Yeah? Because if you ask me what is a woman, and I say a woman is a woman, I have to say nothing. Yeah? If you ask me what is a potato, and I say a potato is a potato, I will explain that. So when you say love is love, first let's start with definitions. So define love for as a Christian, love comes, my definition of love comes from God, who is love, right? So, love is patient, love is kind, it's not what can you decide to It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not eagerly angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So love is something, okay? So if you're telling me you love someone, the question is, are you patient? Are you kind? Is it rooted in truth? Is it rejoicing in evil or rejoicing in good? Okay? So that's the question. Because so if you're telling me love is love in, in the context of LGBTQ, you're telling me not to tell you the truth, right? If the truth is that LGBTQ is wrong, and I don't tell you, am I rejoicing in the truth? Yeah. If we cannot have a conversation, if we cannot be patient and kind to one another, then it's not love. Okay? So everything is something, but everything but you need to have a definition for it. Sawa so, sawa. So. Yes. And Jesus will be fine. So if Jesus was here, in, you see, in this diverse situation, he did have diverse situations. Jesus had a job also. He was the one bringing the fire. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so next. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you know, I'll give you a picture behind the picture.
Good afternoon, chat. So our question, uh, which was given to our group, I understand that if I'm uncomfortable with my body, does that make me transgender? And our answer was no. Uh, the reason why we say that is uh, as human beings, there are certain things that we are uncomfortable with when it comes to our body. Those things that we call insecurities, right? Uh, for example, if you are a man and you don't have a deep voice, okay, let me start by even defining transgender for those of us who view as a mystery definition. So, transgender means that if you are a man, you don't identify as a man, you think that you are a woman, or if you are a woman, uh, vice versa. So now, being uncomfortable with your body uh, is those aspects that you do not, uh, we are not comfortable with in ourselves. For example, like I was saying, if I'm a man and I don't have a deep voice, I can be a man on over on a fan on a deep. So uh, I don't believe that, uh, we don't believe as a group that uh, that that one aspect alone should make me feel like I do not belong in the category of men. If, for example, you are a woman and you have a deep voice, it does not mean that you are not a woman, right? So, to conclude, I would say that as human beings, uh, as you say, we are forever afloat. We are those parts of us that we are constantly struggling with. We have those insecurities, we have insecurities within us. But those insecurities should not uh, be used as uh, to point out or maybe to you know for us to see that I belong to this group or I don't belong to this group. Thank you. All right, that was clear it's quick, right? If your transgenderism because someone had written that as one of the questions and where are people created transgender and how are we supposed to respond? No one is created transgender. Okay? There are people who have a mental disorder that is called gender dysphoria. That means that you think that you are born in the wrong body. Now, there are some people who then decide in order to treat that, they are going to try to change their body instead of trying to heal their mind. Because that is a mental, it's a mental issue, it's not a physical one. Okay? So you end up, the way the doctor was saying, you end up mutilating your body because you're trying to make your mind you're trying to appease the lie that's in your mind. Okay? Again, like we said, anyone who is struggling, because usually if, if someone has gender dysphoria, there's a lot of anxiety, depression, and there's a lot of suicide um, in this particular group. But it will never be loving to affirm someone in a lie. That's how. Many scares are No matter how much you think someone is struggling, it's not loving to lie to them. That's not love. So that's not love. It's the more difficult thing to tell them, you're actually not a man, okay? You're a woman, or you're not a woman, you're a man. But that's still what you have to do. Can we be kind and gracious in how we say it? Yes, and we should. But you should never sacrifice truth because you're trying to be loving. Because truth and love are not opposite to each other. So, what's up? Alright. Also, all of us have been uncomfortable with our body. See? Mm -hmm. So, you've all been through puberty. <coughs> yeah? But it's just your body. So, the, the, the cure for a lot of transgenderism is puberty. You let your body do what it naturally does. And then you deal with the anxiety and depression that's stemming from other things, or even from your body. So, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, here was our statement. If you love me, you will accept me. True or false? And you have to explain as to why you support or you oppose. And in our group, uh, our discussion was revolving around the book of First Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1, which talks about love. Uh, and we tackled this statement by, first of all, defining different types of love. And the first one is the agape love, 
there is the love, the love of God for everyone. And we see that everyone deserves to be loved and to be accepted. So there are some of us who support it by saying that if you love me, you will accept me. Yes, because first of all, you understand me. You know my weaknesses and my shortcomings. And now that you have decided to love me, you just have to accept me. And now you might be speaking. We as human beings, we have different types of love that our relationships revolve around. We have the fraternal love, that is the love, the family love, the love in a family, where we feel like everybody in a family has to be loved and accepted. And we saw that it is good that if in a family you love someone, just accept him or her the way he or she is, regardless of the shortcomings, and the weaknesses. We also have some other types of love, like the, the pragma love, the long, this is a long lasting love. And sometimes we find that it is a challenge to us as human beings because sometimes I can love you in the beginning, but as we go on with our relationship, I discover that you have some underlying issues that I cannot cope up with. Or I feel like maybe I'm being, you know, me in one way or another, and we find that so we have those of us who support you that it is true. If you love me, you just have to accept me the way I am. And part of us is so that, yes, I can love you, but uh, some weaknesses can hinder me from loving you effectively. Thank you. Um, so, how many of us are parents here? Hmm? Many, many of us are parents. How, how many of us have been children here? Hmm? Yeah, we've all been children. If you're, if you're a child, when you matter give a gift, and then they come to you and they tell you, if you love me, you will accept me. <laughs> you, you will accept it's just a part of who I am. Sibadu Tamchapa. Yeah? Now Tamchapa, because you love them, not because you hate them. When, when, when there's a difference, and when people say love and acceptance are the same thing, that's where the problem comes in. Because there's no one who has ever been a child, properly loved by their parents, who has never been disciplined. Okay? Acceptance and love are different. They should not be in the same category. Alright? So if someone is um, in the LGBTQ and uh, this is just who I am, you have to love me this way. The same way that I, if someone came to me today and said, hey, oh, one of you now you leave me, we leave here and then you're passing by, I don't know, what is, what is a club that's near here? I'm a senior person, you don't know clubs. So. But the, the, you find me in a club, because I'm a single woman, so you find me in a club with a man somewhere in the dark. Actually, me, you come here, so you accept me. So this is me. Will you be loving if you say, yes, I'm a Christopher, and they are true, evil, evil. Will you be loving me? So if it's not love to me, if I'm fornicating, then it's not love to someone who is struggling with homosexuality or adultery or stealing or drinking. So, so we accept that which is good. We know that which is good because God has told us what is good. It's him who defines right or wrong. So, so, so love and acceptance are not the same thing. Are we together? That seems to have made people sad. Are you sad? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's a hard truth, but it's true. Just the same way as you. Don't say, oh, sorry. It's flashing. So we always say, you know, that, that parents will love their children no matter what. I can love you in spite of yourself. Okay? I can love you and hate what you do. God loves us when we sin, He hates that sin. Okay? Sama so, Sama. So. Um, our 
question was, uh, can you be a gay Christian? Can you be a gay Christian? So here we have two terms. We have a gay and we have Christian. So who is a gay? A gay is a man who has a sexual feeling toward um, a fellow man. And a Christian is a follower of Christ. Or, uh, also, not all, also a Christian uh, should also have a Christ-like behavior. So as a Christian, are you supposed to be a gay? Uh, we have discussed uh, about the story of um, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, how God uh, destroyed them. So we are your act. And we also discussed about, uh, uh, about the creation. We saw God creating Eve to Adam. If God was really to encourage Christian to be gay, see, Adam, a fellow man, not even Eve. So no. Uh, we have given, uh, we had an example uh, of animals. When animals are mating, have you ever seen any animal, if it's a male dog, mating the fellow male dog? Have you? Um, so if you, or, uh, you as a Christian, uh, you as a gay want to be a Christian, there has to be transformation. But I guess you are both. You can be a gay, who is a Christian? Single. Uh, yeah. And also, I'm giving you a segment to go and read in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 27. Thank you. All right. So, two things. Yes, no, you cannot be a gay Christian because you cannot be identified with your sin. Our sin does not identify us. The same way as I can't come here and say, I'm a proud, I'm an adulterous Christian. Or I am a, a, a stealing Christian. Yeah, I, if God has called something sin, then it's sin, right? So it, it can never be what identifies me. There should be nothing before my, my the Christianness because Christ is our identity. In Him we live and move and have our being. So He tells us who we are. Okay? So, so now one of the misconceptions. When you're answering these questions, and I said I want to be able to go out and have this conversation. When someone asks you, you see the way you ask the question, but when you ask the question, have you ever seen in the wild, the wild animals uh, homosexual sex? Right? And the answer you say is yes, and all of you would be wrong. Okay? Homosexual acts have been recorded in the animal kingdom. There's lions, all of these things, okay? But, just first, just because animals do it, doesn't mean humans should do it, okay? Second, it was asked where the ones who are able to reason. So you can't tell me, oh, oh, also, animals kill their children. Should we start killing our children? Yeah, okay? So that shouldn't be the reason to justify our behavior. Secondly, that behavior is also an anomaly in that kingdom. Because when that behavior happens, the way we say it, there is no procreation cannot happen. Okay? So if you listen, I want to if you go there and someone tells they'll pull up the Wikipedia page and show you the lines. Okay? So when you're making an argument, let's research the argument first before we make it. So, so. Because sometimes I go to Nashikwa, and then when they tell you that, then you're like, oh, then maybe people can be born gay, Abana. It doesn't prove it. All right? Okay? Okay. Our question was straightforward. How do I help my friend who, all, who thinks he or she is gay? Okay, since we analyze this one, that I'm French, a, pers a person close to me, now, he is thinking he is gay. What are you doing? One of the neighbors said, "I am not here. What are you doing here, my neighbor?" He is thinking. Yeah, I am not here. I feel you. I 
if you disagree with the first two, then it means that you hate the evil one. Which is why Bishop got the message, is this just going to be a gay bashing? Eh? Someone or whatever it is. If you believe those three things, then it will justify almost anything. Because fear of Jumunya is not popular and not often, as I said, I have to be such a boy. Right? Such a boy. Now, I have to be a boy. But it's experience. And if I refuse to experience, then I'm rejecting myself. Okay? So you need, once you've understood those three lies, you can see why they think what they think. Because if you believe that, but then that's what you're fighting for. That's their doctrine. We come up with this as we have our doctrine as Christians. Okay? So when you're having a conversation with them, the first way to respond is you respond with compassion. You can say, I understand that you're struggling with something, or the way doc say you first ask the first question you should ask is what do you mean by that? When you say I am in love with her, if I come to you and I'm in love with a woman, you say, well, okay, in love means what? Or you like women, what, does, what do you mean by that? Okay? Ask the question, don't just tell them where the pule, when the Lord saves you, who does All right? Because God has probably put you in there, like you might be the only Christian you come to contact with. Okay? So, secondly, so you respond with compassion, but then you respond with conviction, which is you never sacrifice the truth for in, in the name of love. So that's what we said before. Yeah? So I, if I'm not telling you the truth, I'm not loving you. So you remain, you remain on God's word. God's word will never change. Alright? If everything else changes, God doesn't change. And then the third thing is you respond with community. You do not chase people out, throw them in. It doesn't have to be you. You do not walk alone. As scripture tells, it's, it's a lot easier for you to be pulled down into the mud than to pull someone up. So sit and get back you have people within the church. You see, your bishop has opened the church. This conversation is possible. So you don't have to be, whether it's you who is struggling or you know someone who is struggling, you don't have to walk by yourself. God has put us in a family of believers. So, so finally, the gospel is true, which means that the blood of Christ is sufficient for all of us. There's nothing that you've done that, God, that, Jesus, that the blood of Jesus is sufficient in cleansing it from. Okay? So come on, you know, we struggle, come on, you know, we need to struggle. The blood of Christ is enough for all of us. Alright? Our identity is found in Christ, our strength is built upon Him, and our foundation is on the rock, which is Him and His Word. Sasa. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for today. Michelle, I want to say thank you for the conversation. I hope this is just the beginning, right? You will be having this conversation. You will start the, you will have the conversation here and in your homes and in school, everywhere. So, so. But keep educating and building yourself up. Okay? But always remember that it's in the strength of God that you can only, it's only in the strength of God that you can live for God. So, so. God bless you. Last question. If, you have, if someone has experimented with homosexuality, that doesn't mean your identity is found in it. Okay? Your sin does not define you. So the blood of Christ, it must have, it's enough. So if you've done it, just like any other sin, you reject the sin and you come to Christ. And in Christ, we are a new creation. It doesn't mean every temptation will go away. Because many people think that, oh, once now I'm saved, that means I'll never feel that desire again. Even if the desire is there, you surrender it to Christ every day. Scripture tells us every day you take up your cross and you follow him. So, so, so it, um, salvation is not the absence of temptation, but it is the presence of Christ to help you through that temptation to honor him. So, so in, in our salvation we find our strength in Christ. Okay? Yes.